So here's a, a practice exercise. Uh, generating condensed structural formulas from line angle structural formulas for alkanes. And uh, I'm going to put these little titles on here because I think when you go back and look at notes, um, that little description there gives you a clue, oh, this is what this example is about, so that you don't have to search through so many things. For each of the following alkanes, determine the number of hydrogen atoms present and then write the condensed structural formula. You're like, but there aren't any listed. Yeah, that's because I'm a little behind and I didn't have time to um, draw those out or anything. So I'm just going to draw them on here as soon as I find the example in the book. Okay. That's not what I wanted. So here are the ones they give us. This is A. And that's B. In the future, I hope to uh, get my act together and have these printed on there and have the slides up for you before the lecture and all that good stuff. Okay, so those are the alkanes. Those are their line angle formulas. And they are asking us to determine the number of hydrogens on each carbon and then write the condensed structural formula. Like, well, do we have to do it in that order? Not necessarily. You might find it. Um, you might find it easier. I guess that's condensed. I was thinking expanded. So the condensed structural formula. You might find it easier to write the condensed structural formula first. So let's do that for A. Oh shoot. What did I do? Resume. There we go. No, okay, fine, I'll draw it again. Love technology, hate technology. At least those are easy to draw. Okay, 4A, what would be the condensed structural formula for that? What is the condensed formula? That's where we just use C's for the carbons and we don't draw any of the hydrogens. No, that's the skeletal. Oh, good grief. I think I need a brain transplant today. So let's do this. Let's just leave some space and put in the carbons and then put in the hydrogens. So I've placed a carbon at the end of each of those lines in the line angle formula. This is one of the reasons why I don't, I'm, I'm not going to try to trick you because it does get confusing and I have to stop and think about it. And if I'm the teacher and I have to stop and think about it, then that's just too much for you guys to worry about. Condensed structural formula, that means that we're going to put all the hydrogens that are bonded to a carbon just right next to it. So instead of writing carbon with hydrogens all around it, we're just going to write like CH3 or CH2. That's the structural, I mean condensed formula. So this carbon on the end, how many hydrogens is it going to have? Three. Three. Any carbon that only has one bond to another carbon is going to have three hydrogens because it needs to have four single bonds. This carbon in the middle here, can't point in that view, this guy right here is bonded to this carbon and that carbon and this one. How many hydrogens does he need? He just needs one. And how about this guy? He needs two. What about this guy? Three. That guy's on the end, so he's going to have three. And what about this last guy down here? Three. He's also going to have three. So some of these carbons have three 
those are the ones that are on the kind of on the outside. They're only bonded to one other carbon. This carbon has two of its bonds taken care of with the other carbons, and it needs the remaining two satisfied by hydrogen. So each of these carbons, remember in this chapter we're only doing single bonds, then carbon has to have four single bonds. Any questions about that one? Okay, let's do this next one. So on this one, let's try just looking at this line angle structure and writing down the number of carbon atoms. So this carbon on the end will need how many? Three. Three. We can say that about all of these guys on the ends. They're all going to need three. What about this guy in here? He just needs one. How about this guy? That one needs two. This guy? One. Because there's three lines coming together there. And this guy over here? He'll need two. So then to draw the condensed structural formula for that, um, CH3, CH, now he's got a CH3, and that's connected to a CH2, connected to a CH, a CH3, and a CH3. I probably should have done that in a different color. So, let, let's be clear that this there's a separation here. Any questions? Did you miss our name? Now, for A, I drew it in the same shape with the curves and stuff, the bends. And in B, I wrote it more in a straight line. Usually the condensed structural formula is, is dr done more straight, you know, with right angles. But is it wrong to do it this way? No. So there are many, many ways that you could draw the condensed structural formula for this line angle formula. I mean, you could turn it upside down and make it squiggle around and do all kinds of crazy things. That makes it really hard for the teacher to figure out if you did it right or not. Just a general strategy. You want to make it real easy for the instructor to see, yes, I got the right answer. You don't want to make it hard. So, no questions? Yes? Well, this is asking for the number of hydrogens on each carbon atom. And so um, for B, I wrote those up here. So this three, one, two, one. This one, um, you know, they maybe want you to, to write that out too. So let's do that just to be complete. So this guy has three, and this has one, and two, and three, and three. Which brings up another, um, another thing. Sometimes in questions, there's actually two questions, or there's two different things that you need to provide. Um, in this homework, you're grading yourself, and so it's kind of up to you. On an exam, though, if the question is asking, you know, what is this and what is that, then you really need to answer both of them, okay? And that learning to answer um, the actual question that is asked not some related question, and to answer all the parts of the question can serve you well later in life on a job application or, you know, dealing with your boss. Uh, when you answer the question that's asked and you answer it completely, life goes better. It just does. Uh, yes? Are your tests like fill in? Um, I think I'll probably do a combination of writing out the answer, and multiple choice. This is, this is a small enough class that grading fill-in answers is not going to be too bad. And, and really, with organic chemistry and biochemistry, 
we need to see that you know how to draw the structures. So it'll probably be a combination. But some of it, you know, like uh, learning what the terms are and stuff are, are much easier as multiple choice. Any other questions?